So what is going on guys, welcome back to yet another video here on the Freak Flyers YouTube channel and today we're going to be doing yet again another list video but this time a little bit different, still related to skydiving but it's going to be my top 9 skydiving aircraft. There are a lot of skydiving aircraft, I've only included the ones that are the most common, the most recognizable ones so if the your turbo finished whatever plane is not here it means it sucks and it means it didn't make the list so go ahead and comment your favorite plane if you want to oh i love the uh, Icelander, or whatever, whatever it's called uh, the quest kodiak whatever it is oh i love it so much comment it did, didn't make the list because it sucks or if it, if it is good it's not an iconic plane so without further ado let's get started so first on our list we have the classic cessna 182 the world's most common skydiving aircraft Every other DZ has one. It's not great, it's small, it takes only four jumpers, no turbo, so it takes like half an hour to get 10,500 feet. But this bad boy isn't about speed or turning tons of loads. It's a skydiving classic and it would be disrespectful not to include it. I was going to put it in the honorable mentions section, but it's not an outdated plane. Because prior to swoop comps, it's an amazing and effective way to take four or five jumpers to 5,000 5, feet in a few minutes. And I personally have done like 14 loads in one day on these bad boys, so they're no joke. Uh, I mentioned the name on the title Cessna 182 RG as a little wink to my friends over in Klatovi because there's no better <laughs> feeling than the sound you hear after takeoff when the pilot retracts the gear on the RG version. So, moving on. Number 8. We have the only plane on this list I haven't jumped. But I have been inside one and I have been seen one operating a long time. Um, so the PAC 750XL. It's a plane designed specifically for skydiving, or so they say. It has all the ingredients to succeed. It seats 17 skydivers. It has the all-famous Parton Whitney PT-68-34 engine with 750 ponies under the hood. It claims to get to 14,000 feet in under 15 minutes. Uh, you can probably expect just shy of 3 loads per hour with an efficient boarding system. Sounds like a pretty sweet deal and since it's made by our friends over in New Zealand has big shoes to fill. Wink wink, Petra, Icarus Canopies. But with a smaller than expected door, it has low wing, with a big ass hump on the middle of the floor and just the overall package make it score low on my list. Yes, on paper it's an adequate plane, but it's still number 8. Number 7, we got a weird one here. It's the Cessna 206 Stationair. Mentioning its version is important because the Stationair has the door in the back rather than under the wing, like the Skylane. This makes it a fairly good plane, but a little company called Solo Aviation Solutions had the brilliant idea of ripping out the turbocharged piston engine and strapping on a Rolls-Royce turbine with 450 horsepower. After their conversion, you are left with a small plane capable of carrying 6 cramped skydivers to 14,000 feet in under 13 minutes. And with a good ground team and efficient boarding, you might just be able to squeeze in 4 loads per hour. Yes, 4 loads per hour. But to be safe, I'll say it averages 3.5 loads per hour. It's uncomfortable, it's tight, it's a pain in the exit, but it's a little fast plane and I love it. If you are a tandem instructor who jumps one daily, you might hate it. But for me, who only jumped it a few times, I liked it. I do have to say, when I jumped it, it was during an FS4 competition and none of my teammates enjoyed the exit. But I was inside center, so I wasn't too uncomfortable. They, however, do not agree with me. But as a final word, whenever I'm inside a Soloy 206, I can't stop thinking about the fact that these dudes from Soloy strapped two Caravan PT6A 114A engines side to side on a DC3 and on a Caravan to make it go fast, like side to side, with one propeller, because, you know, YOLO, that's it. Number six is probably one of the most biased decisions on this list, but to me, number six goes to Pilatus PC6 Porter. In the past, this was a bad boy. You had one in each DZ in Europe, it's not hard to see, and it's not hard to see why. Depending on the model and the engine you were running, numbers may vary, but the creme de la creme version was the Pilatus PC6-B2 H4 Turbo Porter. This version rocks the PT6 Alpha 27, which is basically the little sister version of the 24, with 680 horsepower, but I believe that the Porter did not use the full, the full 680 horsepower because the chassis could not handle the torque, but do not quote me on that. Most versions carry 9 skydivers, but the H4 can carry 10 skydivers to 14,000 feet in a little over 15 minutes. 
Depending on the pilot and other factors, you can expect 2.5 loads per hour. It's tight in there, but the big ass sliding door and the super slow jump run speeds make up for it. Seriously, with the huge wings this thing has, the drop speeds are so slow that you might actually screw up your exits if you're used to faster dropping planes. And you gotta give a little bit extra time in the separation on the exit unless, of course, you wanna greet the next group on opening. With all this being said, it's a good plane, but it's seen its heyday and now it's becoming less and less common and I predict an extension is going to happen anytime now which is going to be sad since it's one of my favorite planes to jump from because of all the sweet sweet 2000s nostalgia. Number 5 we have the unique Dornier DO-28G92. For all my European viewers you, who enjoy the sunny Algarve or Spain, you guys are very familiar with this bad boy. This beast makes me question everything I know about planes and skydiving in general. It's a definition of brute force. Rather than figuring out elegant solutions to better climb times, our friends over at the Swallow Group managed to fit two Walter turboprop engines on this otherwise piston-powered machine. After this conversion, the total comes out to 1500 horsepower, which might sound surprising, but I'm not sure the full power is used. Nonetheless, Claudius Dornier was an impeccable airplane designer, and he was known to overbuild his planes, which you can clearly see when you set foot inside a DO-28. It's a huge boxy plane, but despite its size, it only fits 15 jumpers. The fact that it's so big, heavy and, over, and an overbuilt machine makes it not as efficient as it could be, but it is in fact the fastest thing out there currently. It's very uncomfortable, it's cramped, you have to constantly hold on for dear life as 1500 horsepower of German engineering take you to 14,000 feet in under 12 minutes. Yes, it might be big and cramped at the same time. It might be ter a terrible write-up, but it's so fast you barely have time to process how much it sucks. In the end, the DO-28 just goes to prove that sometimes brute force outperforms elegance. Number four is going to be everyone's favorite, the Skyvan. More precisely, oh, it's a Dash 7 Skyvan. It sports two Garrett turboprops, one under each wing, and they have a claimed combined power of 1400 horsepower. I'm not sure how true that is, but the thing is, it's, no, it's by no means slow. It takes 23 jumpers to 14,000 feet in whatever minutes. I say whatever minutes because who cares, it's a sky van. It has a huge rear exit ramp, you can stand up on it and it's so much fun, it's so comfortable that you won't care about the climb times. Realistically, you're looking at about 2.5 loads per hour, but you won't find these monsters in efficiency focused DZs. They are all on boogies, events, championships, records, etc. They are truly a staple in the skydiving history and you always know that if there's a sky van around, a lot of fun will be had. Number three, we have the Beechcraft 99. Now, in America, everyone has jumped out of the King Airs. They are the unsung twin prop American heroes. But when we complained about the tiny door, the cramped space, and the wing dangerously close to the exit, DZ owners delivered. What do you get when you want a reasonably cost efficient yet scarily fast plane? You get a Beach 99. The difference between the 99 and the Caravan or the Twin Otter is that the Beach isn't a cargo plane. It's a passenger plane designed to get from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time possible, while maintaining reasonable efficiency. With this being said, this thing is fast. Not super fast by today's standards, but fast nonetheless. It comes standard with two PT6 Alpha 20 engines, combined to a grand total of 1100 horsepower, which might not seem like a lot compared to the 1500 horsepower on the Dornier, but remember, this is not a boxy German military plane. This is a speed missile, and the results speak for themselves. Although not as impressive as modern planes, it takes 17 jumpers to 14,000 feet in under 14 minutes and it's capable of doing 3.5 loads per hour. Some upgraded versions have more powerful engines, such as the PT-6 Alpha 27, but most are flat rated to 550 horsepower, but it still deserves its place in number 3 for just how fast it was compared to everything else. The awesome use of interior space and the big ass door of course, which the other Beechcraft planes did not have. Number 2, we have the one and only, my favorite all time skydiving plane ever, the Twin Otter. Yes, everyone loves the Twin Otter. The Twin Otter to me screams fun jumping. Twin Otter has it all, it's big, it's fast, it's spacious, has a great door, it's truly the ultimate skydiving plane. When I think about great times in big drop zones, I picture Twin Otter. The Twin Otter is truly the no compromises plane for fun jumpers. It sports two PT6 Alpha 27 engines, on almost all unit, units used for skydiving. So you have 680 horsepower under each wing, which translates to a climb to 14,000 feet of less than 15 minutes and about three loads per hour. 
This of course carrying 23 jumpers on it. The DHC-6 300 version is one we're all familiar with and they have Land Canada have done a great job with this bad boy, but some Lucky DZs are running PT6 Alpha 34 engines with a total of 1500 horsepower, the Super Otters as they call them. I'm not sure about the climb times on for these, but I'm pretty sure they can get 3.5 loads per hour. Viking Air is a company that has been selling DHC-6-400 Twin Otters that have these beefed up engines, but since they're quite recent, they have a pretty hefty price tag attached to them, so I think we'll have to wait a few more years before we'll see them on the DZs. But the point of putting the Twin Otter in number 2 is not because it's fast or efficient or whatever, it's because it's the single most recognizable plane in civil skydiving, it's the face of fun jumping, it's a zoo dive wagon that will forever live in our hearts. And for number 1 we have the one and only, the undisputed champion, the ultimate climbing machine. Cessna Grand Caravan. Now, okay, I know I'm gonna get hate for this, and yes, this is a biased decision, but it's my video, so I don't care. There are a bunch of caravan versions as of now, and I will try to explain them quickly. So, first of first off, the regular caravan is the C208A caravan, the short caravan as they call it. It seats 15 people, and it used to come standard with the PT6 Alpha 114 engine which had, I think, like 600 horsepower. But later, when Cessna came out with a C208B Grand Caravan, which was longer and could haul 18 jumpers, both the short and the long version got the new and improved PT6 Alpha 114 Alpha engines with 675 horsepower, making the short caravan a snappy climber and the Grand Caravan a decent climber. By far, the most common version of the caravan is the C208B, but... With the standard engine, jumpers are seeing climb times of up to 20 minutes to 14,000 feet and averaging 2.5 loads per hour, which is not great by today's standards. But in the 2010s, two companies had the idea of throwing 900 horsepower engines under the hood. Texas Turbines came out with a Supervan 900, rocking a 900 horsepower Honeywell engine, and Blackhawk came out with a XP140, rocking a PT6 Alpha 140 engine with 867 horsepower. Both conversions have their ups and downs, but when it comes down to it, they are both mega fast and can easily take 18 jumpers to 14,000 feet in under 14 minutes. And it can easily do 3 loads per hour, and with efficient boarding and good jump run timing, you can probably get 3.5 loads per hour no problem. It's truly the best combination of speed, fuel economy, comfort, door size, maintenance, etc. There are even some companies working on fully electric caravans, so soon we might see the first e-caravan in the drop zones. Okay guys, this was just a little video talking about skydiving airplanes. I'm sorry if I didn't mention your obscure underground plane. Uh, if you don't agree with me, please comment down a huge text saying why you don't agree with me and why my opinions suck. Other than that, this has been my time for today and I will see you guys on the drop zone.